Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome back to Fragmental. Thank you for joining me. I've got a lot of fragrances. More fragrances than I could wear in 10 lifetimes, yet I still keep buying them. Am I obsessed? I have an insane fragrance collection worth thousands. Let's count them. Now, before I get going on this, I know for a fact that there will be fragrance YouTubers out there that own way more fragrances than me. Just off the top of my head, Dallas at Chaos Fragrances, Ashton at Gent Scent, Sebastian, the perfume guy, Stephen, Red Lessons. They've been in the game for longer than I have. They've been collecting for longer than I have. They've been doing YouTube for longer. So pretty much guaranteed they're gonna have a lot more fragrances than me. But I've got a lot, more than most. The last count I did was a couple of years ago. I think it was around the 500 mark. So I'm gonna show you my collection today and then at the end of the video I'm going to reveal how many fragrances I own and I've been asked over the years how many fragrances I own and can I show off my fragrance collection I've never done that and the reason is because I'm a little bit embarrassed not about how many fragrances I own whether it's too few or too many but about my organization it's not very well organized there's no rhyme or reason to it. There's some vague organisation in terms of collections, but it's very higgledy-piggledy, shall we say. So you organisational people out there will be furious with the way I organise my fragrances. As you can see behind me, there's bokeh, there's camera blur, the focus is blurred behind me. So all these fragrances might look quite nice in the background with this lovely LED lighting, but when you see them up close, you'll see what I mean. But I figured, what the heck, I've been doing this for long enough now to not really care that much what anyone thinks about how I store my fragrances on my shelves. So we're gonna dive in. We're gonna look at everything I've got on my shelves, see if you can get an idea of how many fragrances there are, and then at the end, I'm gonna come back and reveal what the final number is. So let's, uh, let's take a look. If I'm gonna show you my entire fragrance collection, I may as well show you everything, warts and all. This is a corner that I use to store my film equipment. This shelf is one that you never see on camera. It's very random. And you might notice, actually, that these have films on them loads of DVDs. They used to have more on. The fragrances are slowly taking over because this room, this studio that I film in, my YouTube room, is actually a cinema room. That's what it originally was. So these black shelves were for films and now they are for fragrances. But I can't let go of the films completely. I still want to keep some of them on there. So you might notice a few classics as I'm going around here. So let's just quickly start on here. We've got a couple of 80s toys, Optimus Prime and He-Man. And then a few Galans, some of the Ideal collection, and my only Penhaligon's fragrance, Quercus. I've got that because it was £20. I've been meaning to pick up Halfetti for a long time, so hopefully I'll be able to get that at some point. This is an interesting brand, Wuda Sue. This was my favourite of them, Anistheum Shikra. This is like a creamy, fresh, aldehydic, but deep, woody fragrance. Really good, but... No one talks about that brand. I did a video of them. You can find that on my channel, but that is a great fragrance. Here we go, some of Ashton's Galleria Parfums, which is no longer going, or Ashton's no longer involved. My my molecules, some uh, bathhouse fragrances. These are pretty nice. These You can buy these just on, on the high street, pretty cheap, I think around 40, 50 pounds. Nice bottles, nice scents, a few pocket scents up here. They do a lot of clones, but uh, they've done some fantastic original fragrances. One of my favourites from them, where is it now, is uh, Bondi Man. This is their interpretation of Amouage's Beach Up Man, and that is fantastic. Super strong. Moving down. Now, this is where it gets interesting, because look at all these Aaron Terrence Hughes boxes on here. Some aren't even open. They've got the cellophane on them. Some of the boxes are empty, some of them are, are full. I've just either got other versions of them or I've just not had a chance to open them. But all of these boxes, even the ones that aren't open like this, obviously I've smelled all of Aaron's fragrances. What have we got down here? Some of the older bottles on. That is a really good fragrance and Hard Candy obviously has upgraded his packaging a little bit. I've even got some of the original bottles that he came out with few amouage uh, little sampler sets here this is the that's the x-straight travel spray set a few little dvds sneaking in there and 
We've got, oh yeah, look at these, some, some fragrance. I don't even know what this, this is a fragrance from Aaron, summer 22. I don't even know if it got released. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's a, a, an unreleased mod or, or what. These are mods of the abandoned Smolder 2. We went a different route. We're going with a different name for the fragrance, but we've got a, a vanilla plum and tobacco. We've got a caramel plum, tobacco and vanilla. I think that was my favorite of the two. That was really good. I think we, we need to get these out at some point because they are, they are very good. And then we've got a few more films. You can see some of my film tastes here. Really random. Got some Sarah Baker part films, really good. Some memoirs, uh, more Aaron Terence Hughes here. We've got some of his, uh, his cheap ones. Oh, this is an interesting brand, Anonym. These were sent to me by someone anonymous. I don't know who sent them. I don't know how they got my address, but they did. I'm assuming it's someone that I've had dealings with in the past, but to this day, they have never revealed who they are. And the fragrance didn't get much traction, the, the fragrances, because I don't know, I think no one really talked about them, even though I thought they were pretty good, but it was just a weird thing just to send fragrances uh, anonymously. I don't know if that experiment quite worked. Oh, these oils are great. Scent Salim, if you've never tried them, this is one of the first sort of little collaborations I did. I went to Leeds, went to their shop, and these oils, some of their oils are really good. A few more Amouage travel sets, and I love Atelier Dazors. Got a few, few of those on there. I wish I could display these on camera, but I can't display everything. What do we got down here? Um, oh, more Aaron Terrans used. Look, we've got some Boss Bastard mods here. This was obviously an abandoned uh, design for Aaron's labels. Uh, I didn't do that one uh, for myself at all. And this is a play one. Anyone's from Aaron that are playing are probably mods of, of Smolder or a version of Smolder and a few, a few more ATH. But here we have some of the very original ATH fragrances, Boss Bastard, Deviant, Oud, and an opened original Boss Bitch. I wonder what these are worth now. And then loads more mods. Look, Neon, that was a mod of Neon, uh, another, a second mod of Neon. Aaron likes to send me some of the fragrances before he's released them just to get my opinions uh, on which versions to go for. There's one of the older versions of Daddy, some more. Uh, another boss bastard down there. I, I, another neon. I've lost track of what all these fragrances were and if they ever got released. There are so many of them. Let's move over to the other shelf. This is the shelf you see on camera. And this was originally just put together so it would look nice on camera. So at a selection of designer and, and niche, and we've got a good mix of all sorts on here. Starting at the top, got a few moodlers. Oh. Pure Havan and Pure Malt at the back there. Yeah, I never really um, wore Ultimate very much. It was okay, but not an amazing release. Got some Nasamato on there. Love that brand, one of my favorite niche brands. And some of the uh, Roger Parfum Colognes, the latest uh, Elysium O Intense. And we've got to have a few Creed bottles on the shelf in the background. Um, we've got some PDM, Galloway there, and Leighton, Carlisle. That one's Herod actually, Carlisle at the back. My only bottle of Zoologist is Camel, adore that fragrance, superb. And a few Killian, Angel Share, got a bottle of Black Phantom and a gorgeous travel sprayer of Intoxicated. Love those Killian travel sprayers. Moving down, this is my little Tom Ford area. A few of my favorite private blends. We got Tuscan Leather Intense. We've got, what's that one? Oud Mineral, Neroli Port, oh, Mandarino di Amalfi, Aqua. Roli Portofino, Tuscan Leather, Plum Japonais, Noir de Noir, Tobacco Oud, amazing, Oud Wood, amazing, and then some of the, the more recent Signature Line releases here, and Imaginary Authors. This was a fragrance I bought years ago off the back of a Mr. Smelly video. This is Bogart Pour Homme. Very good fragrance, really cheap fragrance. I think it's about 15 quid if you've not... Check that one out, check it out because that is an excellent cheapie. And then into more randomness and movies. And you can see I've used some of my DVD cases to, to lift some of the fragrances up so you can see all the fragrances. So some of them are, are elevated. So you can't see any of this on camera. It just looks like a, 
an amazing blur of fragrance bottles, but it's actually up close. Mm, not quite as glamorous. So we've got some uh, YSL, La Nuit de L'Homme back there, and a few niche fragrances. This is uh, Andy Tower's Lead Desert Marocain, modern classic. This is uh, Frank Buclet's Tobacco, if you want to uh, probably an even better, cheaper version of Tobacco Vanille. That's a great one to go for. I've got some Bortnikov, some Centauri Parfums. A few more Galans here. I've got Shalimar and uh, a vintage Samsara. I actually picked up for a good price on eBay. And I've actually got... Uh, this is a vintage Shalimar. Not much left. I have used a little bit. This... I think is a 1960s formulation of Shalimar Extract. So obviously I'm saving that for a, a rainy day or to sell on or to pass down, who knows. And then more randomness, this is my little Armani code section. I've got uh, Profumo, that's at the front because it's still my favorite. Uh, EDP and Code Absolute. Uh, slightly underwhelmed with the Parfum. It's, it's wearable, it's still pleasant. And then the original. Code. A few from the Wanted line. My favourite is still Wanted by Night. Excellent fragrance. Moving down. Oh, here's my little one million collection. I've got some of the latest ones. My favourite of all of these, though, I think is 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 the discontinued Privé. It's always the same, isn't it? The, the best ones are the ones that get discontinued. And see what you can see in there. Timbuktu, great. Bertrand Duchafort fragrance. Very niche, though. I love it, but it's not for everyone. Cool Waters. Bentley for men, intense, some House of Siage in there, and then right down into the dusty depths. Look at this. Look at these dusty tops. They just, it's so hard when you've got a lot of fragrances on shelves. It's really hard to keep cleaning them. I, I try and keep on top of it, but I've neglected this bottom shelf. We've got some tester strips and just some random, random fragrances in there, some perfume parlor. Let's move over to what I think is the main event. These are the shelves that I had to get because I was running out of space. So this was just a necessity and I, I thought it'd look good in the background. So these are the fragrances that you see behind me in the background. And there's a vague sort of order to them by collection, but you'll see that they're all random. They're all mixed up when they're blurred in the background of a video. You can't really tell what's what. So I don't pay too much attention to it. By the way, I hope you're trying to keep count of all these fragrances that I'm showing you and try to come up with some sort of number before I reveal the big number at the end of the video. A few more PDM. Percival, I think that's my favourite freshie. I prefer it to, uh, to Sedley, actually. Love them both, but Percival's amazing. Got some Renier Parfum, some Gujal, uh, all the Zaharoffs. That's not even all the Zaharoffs. Got some more Zaharoffs down here and an Amouage lineup. I've run out of space in this. Line for the Amouage, the latest Jubilation 40, uh, until I can find a better place is, is just just that. I told you there's no there's no proper organisation to this. I'm sorry for all the uh, folks out there who are into organisation. My favourite of my Amouage collection, I'd say, is Reflection 45, as you can see, because uh, I'm running pretty low on that and I've not owned it for very long. Argos fragrances, we sell these on Lux Parfum, so I do get some testers of these fragrances, which is why I've got most of the collection. Great bottles, brilliant fragrances. Got quite a few of the old style uh, Serge Latin bottles here. Some Jean-Paul Gaultier, my favorite of them, I would say is possibly, I love the new Elixir. La Malle Parfum is great. I really love though the discontinued Terrible. It's got a bit more of a sharpness to it, a bit more sour, a bit more of a bite, uh, a bit more attitude. A few more Creeds, Aventus, the new Absolute. This one has just been re-released. This is the original version of Millicene 1849. I think this is uh, re-released in Harrods recently, but this is the original version. So I'm not sure what the differences are there. A couple of bottles of Royal Mayfair. And then we've got some Chanel, some Bleu de Chanel, Edition Blanche. Uh, whoa, hello, I'm Sport Extreme, amazing. Onto the Dior's, look at all the, amazing. How, how do you choose which Dior to wear? It's a, it's a real dilemma, and not to mention how do you choose from, from all of these. And anyone that sees that bottles are still quite full when I show them in videos, most of them are, because when you've got this many fragrances and when you're constantly testing and reviewing, you simply cannot wear the fragrances that you love 
as often as you would. So when I'm talking about a fragrance that I absolutely adore, and it looks like I've not put much of a dent in the bottle, I would be putting a dent in it if I could, but there's, there's just so many here that I can't wear them as often as I would like. Here's the Rogers. Really pleased with the Rogers that I've got here. One of my favorite niche brands, absolutely stunning brand and fragrance de bois, another great luxury niche brand. Got some Jacques Fat, some Navitus, one of my absolute all time favorites, Naxos. This is a great brand I discovered in Essence. This is 2787 Parfums, Rule of 72, Genetic Bliss, both stunning. A little bit of a spice bomb collection there and a couple of the bosses. Some Armaf, some Soradora, some Amarud, Oud for Greatness, another one of my favorites. Toy Boy, just hiding away at the back there. Some niche for all Gallagher fragrances, some, some spares, that's a, an unopened bottle of Elixir and Lamal, and I think an unopened Lamal de Parfum back there somewhere as well. And I just, I've run out of room on my shelves. There's boxes, there's packages, there's discovery sets all here. And by the way, when I do the final count up, I am not going to count any samples or modifications of fragrances. I'm only going to count actual, official, fully released bottles. Some Aqua de Palma, some of my favorite Alexandria fragrances down here, and original Aaron Terence Hughes. Look at that, and this, what's this? Jasmine Amber Rose in his uh, bottles that he, he got the brand going with. Uh, really big improvements in the, in the design and the presentation since, since he started. A few designers, We've got some Jeremy Fragrance one fragrances at the back there. Date and office, I think they are. These are the new Aaron presentation. So if we look at the difference between that and that, I think it's safe to say that he's uh, come on leaps and bounds with his presentation. I'm really pleased for him. So these are mainly the, the newest release. There's a few in there, a couple in there that are still the slightly older design. Uh, the older packaging design, but just, I mean, look at that, tabac, amazing, Oud Noir, brilliant, hard candy, hard candy, elixir, so many, St Luna, love that one too, nice, leathery, oody fragrance, and some of his later releases, more samples, these are some samples I've had for years, I don't even know if they're, they're still good or if they've gone off, and a few more, arm off down there, lots more samples and bits and bobs in it. We are really going into the depths for this one. This is an area that I, I don't really touch very much, although I do occasionally. This is the clone section. We've got Parfums Vintage, we've got Alexandria Fragrances, we've got some Doers, we've got some random things, we've got Pound Shop Fragrances. They're just here because I've got nowhere else to put them. There are though some stunning fragrances in here. There's Emperor X-Ray, we've got some brilliant Alexandria fragrances, uh, Royal Equestrian, that's their version of Leighton. It's maybe even better than Leighton, I think it's longer lasting. Uh, they're all there, I'm not going to go into that. There's so many clones. They are full bottles, they are proper release fragrances, so I am going to count those when I do the final count up. So it's a right mess, I apologise. For that but it's my mess i know where everything is and it's all blurred out on camera in the background anyway yeah sorry about that some of the shelves are a bit messy not very nicely laid out part of the problem is i've run out of space i've run out of shelf space i've kept increasing the number of shelves i have here behind me and there's no room to put any more so if i buy more shelves they're gonna have to take the place of, of other things in the room and in the house and uh, my wife won't let me do that. So I have tried to have some sort of organization but then when new fragrances come in, I've nowhere to put them so they just end up getting squeezed into a section or a collection that they don't belong in. It is what it is. You've seen my collection, am I obsessed? Do I have too many fragrances? Well, I'm a little bit different to people who aren't making YouTube videos about fragrances. I would not have this many fragrances if I weren't doing a YouTube channel. I buy way more than I would 
If I wasn't doing it, I want them for videos. And if I buy a fragrance and I get it right, that video can get enough views and earn me enough AdSense to pay for that fragrance and then still give me some profit. So it's kind of a, a business expense. Of course, I've been sent lots of free fragrances as well. And FYI, no designer brand is gonna send free fragrances. They do not need YouTubers to market their brand. They've got Johnny Depp for that. All right, the only fragrances I've ever been sent for free are sort of niche brands, niche indie brands. Any designer fragrance you've ever seen on my channel, I have bought with my own money. I see a lot of videos where I'm pushing a particular designer fragrance, singing its praises, and people in the comments are like, oh, that brand's just obviously sent him that fragrance. Well, no, that does not happen. A lot of Big niche brands won't send free fragrances either. I've never had any contact with Creed. They've never reached out. I've never had a free fragrance from them. I love some of the Creed fragrances and I've seen comments in the videos that I've done where I've spoken about them positively and people say, well, obviously Creed has sent him the fragrances. I wish Creed would send me free fragrances. Right, so I don't think I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with creating good content and growing my channel. I'm sort of quite obsessed with that, but not in terms of buying lots and lots of fragrances. If I weren't doing this channel, I think I would have quite a few because I started this channel just at the time where I was getting really interested in building up a collection. So even if I hadn't started making videos, I think I would have slowly built up a collection. I was getting into watching YouTube videos. So I think I would have had quite a few, maybe 50 to 100, but I would not have as many as I do. If you don't have a YouTube channel and you have as many fragrances as I do, or maybe even more, you're not necessarily obsessed in an unhealthy way. If you can't afford them, if you're going into debt, then yes, that would be an unhealthy obsession. But if you love it as a hobby, if you are a little bit obsessed with collecting and buying new fragrances, if you can afford it, if that is within your budget, then that's fine. There are worse things to be obsessed with. And if you're not going into debt, just enjoy it. Time to reveal the final number. And actually, I thought I had more. I thought I had more fragrances than I do. I'm slightly disappointed that I don't. It's still a lot, but less than I thought. The final number is 748. And I'm just gonna round it up to 750 because I think there's probably a few other bottles around the house that I haven't counted that aren't in this room. So 750 fragrances. I thought it was over a thousand, to be honest, but no. Amiga 750 fragrances. And that would be more actually if I hadn't sold some fragrances because when I started the YouTube channel, if I didn't like a fragrance, I would review it and then sell it. And I wish I'd have kept them and I do keep them all now because I like to have them for reference. So when a new flanker comes out, if I've got the original version or the previous flanker, then I like to compare the fragrances. And if I've sold them, I can't do that and the video can't be quite as complete as I would like it to be. I've been doing YouTube for around seven years. So that's roughly, 100 or so fragrances per year. So maybe in another couple of years, I might, might be hitting that 1000 mark. As to the value of this collection, well, if you figure there are 750 fragrances, let's say on average, the cost of these fragrances is 100, 150 pounds, let's say 150. It's a lot. Do the math, it's a lot. How many fragrances did you think I had going around filming the shelves? Did you think it was gonna be more or less? How many fragrances do you think a YouTube fragrance channel has to have? How many do you own? Are you beating me? Are you into the thousands? Or do you like a carefully curated collection of no more than 50 or 100 where you sell all the fragrances that you don't absolutely love? Well, I think that'll do it. This has been a big one for me, exposing my fragrance collection, warts and all. I hope you liked it because a few of you over the years have been curious about my fragrance collection and how many I have. If you did like it, give it a like, it really helps. Subscribe if you haven't already to see how many I might have this time next year. You don't wanna miss that video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one, bye.